All right, so now that you guys are experts on photosynthesis on, and, and the ways of fixing atmospheric carbon into glucose, we're going to talk about uh, the next step. We're going to talk about what do we do with that glucose. Now we have it made. We have this organic sugar produced. How do we utilize it? This is a decent graphic about um, kind of the interrelatedness between photosynthesis and our next metabolic process, cellular respiration. It shows how plants produce oxygen, obviously, as a waste product. Also produce these sugar molecules. Animals um, inhale the oxygen. They ingest the sugar, um, carry out respiration, release CO2, which is then utilized uh, once again by the Calvin cycle and photosynthesis. And the whole process kind of um, works in unison with, with one another. So we're going to delve into respiration now uh, and talk about the importance of that glucose molecule and how we utilize it for energy. So if we move forward, here it is. Here's the overall reaction of photosynthesis. We have carbon dioxide and water being utilized along with energy and some enzymatic activity to make glucose and oxygen. The reverse of that is occurring in cellular respiration. We are utilizing the glucose and the oxygen along with some energy, um, some energy release. We have some enzymatic activity which we're going to talk about. Perhaps not in this screencast but the next for sure. Um, releasing some C some carbon dioxide as a waste product, and also releasing some oxygen or some water as well, some H2O. So keep this in mind: how these uh, work hand in hand with one another, and the importance of that. And you're going to see some some chemicals, some molecules that uh, you're going to recognize from the Calvin cycle. Um, they're going to kind of rear their heads again here in these processes. So. The overall reaction of cellular respiration, the overall goal is to release energy from glucose and store it as ATP. We've talked about ATP. We saw ATP as a link between the light reactions and the Calvin cycle in um, photosynthesis, adenosine triphosphate. But the three main processes in respiration are glycolysis, uh, the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle, and then we have the electron transport chain. And you'll notice that in each of these three processes, um, a, a main byproduct is ATP. We're making ATP through glycolysis to the Krebs. And this is the money maker here. As we say, um, <clears throat> this is where the, the vast majority of the ATP comes from, from this uh, electron transport chain inside the mitochondria. This is a mitochondria, and this is where most of this occurs. Glycolysis occurs in every single cell. If it's a living cell, it's carrying out glycolysis. Some cells are luckier than others. They're able to take this process of respiration a step further and go through these other two processes, but every single cell can carry out glycolysis. Every single cell can start this process of glucose and breaking it down into this molecule, pyruvate. Other ones are just lucky enough to take it a step further and make even more ATP. All right, so that's the big picture. That's the overall goal. We want to break down that glucose. We want to store that energy as ATP. And then we use that ATP as an energy currency in our body. Okay, if you want to get out of bed, your body says, all right, uh, self, that's going to cost you uh, several thousand ATP pay up and you're going to pay up with this ATP that you've been storing from glucose that perhaps you ate the night before for dinner. So let's keep going. Here it is at the molecular level. Here's ATP, adenosine triphosphate. It's a, it's a, nucle it's a nucleic acid. All right? This should look a little bit familiar to you. Okay? You know what nucleotides are. Nucleotides are made up of the five carbon sugar uh, they're made up of the phosphate group. They're made up of the nitrogenous base. Remember, we use the drawings with the house here, the pool, and the driveway. Well, here is our five carbon sugar. This is a ribose. Okay, we saw the ribose is a five carbon sugar in a in a nucleotide of RNA. It has the ribose sugar. This is our nitrogenous base. Okay, this is adenine, and then here we have three phosphate groups. This has three pools, not just one. One, two, three. And these are energetic bonds. 
okay? And they are unstable in this current state. These guys don't like to have three phosphates. So breaking off of this one phosphate is a very energetic event. And that's what our body uses for energy. You get rid of this third phosphate, you're releasing a lot of energy, energy that your body can use to do all kinds of things that your body does. So here's our nucleotide, our triphosphorylated nucleotide, three phosphates, ATP. And it's kind of the main character of this whole story. Let's talk about how we make it. Well, first let's talk about what it does. Okay, shouldn't get too far ahead of myself. ATP's potential to do work. What kind of work? Well, in your body, it can do lots of things, lots of essential things. Number one, transport work. It can move things in and out of cells. Here's our phospholipid bilayer. It takes energy to move things against gradients. If you're going to move something from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration, that requires energy. If you're going to pump ions into or out of a cell, that requires energy. So transport work is one very important um, part of ATP's job description. Mechanical work, what does that mean? Well, it's very important in the movement of your muscles. Okay, We have actin and myosin in our muscles. And ATP binds to myosin and it manipulates it, it moves it. Okay, And it causes your muscles to contract, to bridge with one another, to attach, to detach, and to move alongside um, and essentially move your, your limbs, move, move your body around. That's mechanical, actual mechanical movement. Uh, it's important in chemical work. You've seen this before. This is the Calvin cycle. ATP was very important um, in the reduction of, of carbon, all right, uh, when we were trying to generate G3P. It was also very important when we were trying to regenerate RUBP in this stage of the Calvin cycle. ATP was necessary to move atoms around, to rearrange things, uh, and to, to create different chemicals. So it does chemical work. This is why we need it. So how do we make it? Well, a couple different pathways. We talked already about the aerobic pathway. Let's go back. This was the aerobic pathway. If, you, if, if, you, if your body carries out this full process, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, you're going through aerobic respiration. What does that mean, aerobic respiration? Well, it means that there's oxygen present. Like I said, every single cell goes through glycolysis. Every single cell, no matter if there's oxygen or not, will carry out glycolysis will convert glucose into two molecules of pyruvate. That's an anaerobic process. It does not require oxygen. Now, we are lucky enough to be able to take this a step further. We are aerobic organisms, so we can convert this pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, and the acetyl-CoA can enter the Krebs cycle. We can make even more ATP here, and then the electron transport chain can occur in the matrix. We can make even more ATP there. So we're lucky to be able to make this turn and go in this direction. There are some organisms, some bacteria, are anaerobic bacteria. They cannot even survive in aerobic conditions. So this is kind of the end of the line for them. They aren't able to carry out these processes and make all of this ATP in the steps that we can. They can only convert the pyruvate into ethanol, all right, whether it's um, perhaps a yeast or lactic acid, and then they can try to regenerate and, and, and continue the process. But they're only making these two ATP from glycolysis. They're missing out on the Krebs and the electron transport chain. There are times in our body when we are unable to go in this direction. There are times when we are relegated to going this way as well. So uh, if perhaps you are necessarily, if, if an organism can't go this way, we're going to go towards fermentation or anaerobic respiration. Or if your body is in, in oxygen debt, if your muscle cells are out of oxygen, they're going to all of a sudden not be able to go this direction and it's going to be necessary for them to go this direction and they're going to start making lactic acid. Our body, our muscle cells, when they run out of oxygen, they go through fermentation. They don't make alcohol, okay? It doesn't mean that you're going to get drunk um, when your muscle cells run out of oxygen, but they do make lactate. 
and that's what makes your muscles sore okay when they're in oxygen debt and you keep uh, demanding them to do things you keep exercising repetitively or something of that nature. So these are the different pathways, one of them much more efficient than the other. If we're able to go this way and carry out the rest of the process, if you're lucky enough to be able to do that, you're going to be much more successful um, and much more able to create more ATP than if you're only able to go in this direction, carry out glycolysis and then fermentation. Much less um, efficient much less ATP, less energy, um, and less optimal for an organism if it's looking to be energetic. So we're going to continue on. We're going to talk about uh, glycolysis more in depth, as well as the Krebs cycle, as well as the electron transport chain, and how do we actually make all of that ATP when there is oxygen present.